Chapter 5 I'm always chasing rainbows one. At the end of the rainbow, there's happiness. And to find it, how often I've tried. But my life is a race. Just a wild goose chase. And my dreams have all been denied. Why have I always been a failure? What can the reason be? I wonder if the world's to blame. I wonder if it could be me. I'm always chasing rainbows. Watching clouds drifting by. My schemes are just like all my dreams. Ending in the sky. Some fellows look and find the sunshine. I always look and find the rain. Some fellows make a winning sometime. I never even make the game. Believe me. I'm always chasing rainbows. Waiting to find a little blue bird. In vain. I breathed in through my nose as I sidestepped around a pile of rubble and continued to walk onward towards my destined destination with the only thought in my mind being Alastair and how I just wanted to be in his arms once again. I knew Alastair hated to be touched yet he seemed to love my touch like he nearly craved it as much as I did which he hid quite well a while I struggled with he had this aura which just made it obvious that he hated being touched and on the contrariety. I was silently walking down the street watching as other demons moved aside and or just clear the area, I heard some screaming and saw a rather smaller demon land on the concrete road with a splat yet they seemed to be okay I guess. Oh, I'm alive. I'm alive. They hollered. With a car honk and tire squeal, they got run over. I hope they hop back up again soon dot 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 uh, or later. With what sounded like a male voice hey. Thanks for the fun time, hot stuff. Yeah, yeah, listen. A slightly higher pitched voice said. I looked over on my way past and saw that the higher pitched voice was a very pink and feminine spider angel dust the lower voice was an old looking owl demon. Keep this discreet, hear me? Angel said. I can't let it get out I'm offering my services to randos on the street. The other said. It was a quick cash grab, ya yeah, got it? Angel said. The older looking one scoffs whatever you say, slut. The owl demon laughs. Ouch, ooh, such an insult. Angel said in a fake offended voice. Let me know when you come up with something creative to call me you sack of poorly packaged horse shit, Angel said smirking. Tell the missus I said hi. Angel gave the other a smooch nookums. A dog whining could be heard pack of poor the male demon was cut off by car squeals and crashing noises, I rolled my shoulders before preparing to continue walking on my way knowing that I shouldn't be wasting my time so carelessly like I am doing so. Wink. A small bird or maybe even a rat demon ran by snatching up Angel's angel dust on the way past. Hey! Angel shouted. Up yours, drag show. The demon yelled out at Angel in return. A piece of rubble fell from the sky and landed on the smaller demon with a crunch. Angel gasped oh my god. My drugs. Damn it. I giggled softly at the show and continued on my way down the road not catching the confused expression the spider demon sent my way as I soon was out of sight. I picked up the pace seeing Alastair waiting on the street corner he saw me and sent a friendly little wave in my direction and that was all I needed to set my walking pace to a light jog as I flung myself into his warm arms. Bambi. I I missed you. I said in a slightly raised voice not caring about the random demons who turned to watch the little exchange. Alastair chuckled and placed an arm around my waist holding me close as we walked down the side road heading home when we saw a light crowd around some picture shows on the window display so we stopped to watch alongside with them. Good afternoon. I'm Katie Killjoy. The annoying bitch named Katie said, I will think of such cursed words but I wouldn't use them as often. And I'm Tom Trench. The not so annoying and kinda nice Tom said. Chaos at a pentagram city today as a turf war is raging on the west side between notable King Sir Pontius and self-proclaimed spunky powerhouse Cherry Bomb. Tom Trench said. That's right Tom. After the recent extermination, many areas are now up for grabs. Demons all over hell are already duking it out to gain new territory. 
Katie Kiljoy added on to him. D do you think they'll see come after your turf Bambi? I asked as I shuffled even closer to Alastair. Not a chance, my dear. He smiled at me warmly no need to fret my darling, after all dot 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 who would want to face off with us I let out a squeaky toy noise and nuzzled up against Alastair's side. Those two seem to really be going at it, huh? Looks like they're fighting tooth and nail for that hot spot, Katie said. And I'd sure like to nail her hot spot, Tom said with a short chuckle. Katie gave a forced giggle you are a limp dick jackass, Tom. Or should I say she splashed coffee onto Tom's crotch and we saw his pained expression as Tom grunts no dick. Not again, he grunts. She is such a meanie. I muttered under my breath which seemed to get a snicker out of Alastair. Coming up next, we have an exclusive interview with the daughter of Hell's own head honcho, who's here to discuss her brand new passion project, Katie Kiljoy said. The camera showed Tom wincing in pain. All that and more, after the break. Katie's grip on her mug caused the mug to break suck it up you little by the off-air noise was heard and the screen shifted to off signal. I felt my partner's gaze and looked up at him and saw him gazing at me with narrowed eyes I blushed and placed a quick peck onto his cheek making him gain a small light tint to his cheeks. What was that for? He grinned. Be because I love you I stuttered and he hummed before bringing his hand up and held my chin close to his face before pressing a nice and compassionate kiss onto my lips as I kissed him back with the same amount of love and possibly even more. Welcome back. Katie's voice from the TV made us separate and look towards the screens again. We hear a bone snap and a short scream. So, Charlotte. Katie started. A squeak was heard it's Charlie. Whatever. The bitch said. Tell us about this new passion project you've been insistently pestering our news station about. Katie said, escalating in intensity. Well. Charlie clears her throat. The princess breathes out as most of you know, I was born here in hell, and growing up, I always tried to see the good in everything around me. Pen clicks and stabbing noise and short scream sounded. Hell is my home, and you are my people. We we just went through another extermination. We lost so many souls, and it breaks my heart to see my people being slaughtered every year. No one is even given a chance. There was a quiet desk slam and car chirp in the background I can't stand idly by while the place I live is subjected to such violence. So, I've been thinking. Isn't there a more humane way to hinder overpopulation here in hell? Perhaps we can create an alternative way to change souls through. Redemption? Redemption? I questioned and then I was intrigued, as was my partner. Well, I think yes. So that's what this project aims to achieve. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm opening the first of its kind. A hotel that rehabilitates sinners. There was silence and a low squeaking sound. This could be f fun. I said quietly and Alastair's smile widened dramatically. You know? Cause hotels are for people passing through. Temporarily. Charlie said, I figure it would serve a purpose. A place to work towards redemption. She seemed to have lost her confidence and weakly said yay. Alastair let off a short radio static this indeed may be a new game my darling, indeed fun. Look, every single one of you has something good deep down inside. I know you do. Maybe I'm not getting through to you, she said. She's going to sing. I mumbled in the demon in front of us left. Alastair and I tilted our heads at the same time which I thought was inwardly cute and such in a way. I have a dream. I'm here to tell. About a wonderful, fantastic new hotel. Yes, it's one of a kind. Right here in hell. Catering to a specific clientele. Oh uh, ooh. Inside of every demon is a rainbow. Inside every sinner is a shiny smile. Inside of every creepy hatchet wielding maniac. It's a jolly, happy, cupcake loving child. I th think she could be be onto something. I in a very doubly wrong way though, I said subconsciously, 
my buck rose a brow. We can turn around. They'll be heaven bound. With just a little time. Down at the happy hotel. S.H. She has a nice voice on the H higher note. I said softly, Alastair chuckled. Aren't you just the most adorable ST demon in hell Alastair cooed. So all you junkies, freaks, and weirdos. Creepers, fuck-ups, crooks, and zeros. And the fallen superheroes, help is here. All of you cretins, sluts, and losers. Sexual deviants and boozers. And prescription drug abusers. Need not fear. Forever again. We'll cure your sin. We'll make you well. You'll feel so swell. Right here in hell, at the happy hotel. H has been hotel sounds are more fitting, I grunted remembering the name I gave the hotel in my universe. There'll be no more fire. And no more screams. Just puppy dog kisses, and cotton candy dreams. And puffy puffy clouds. You're gonna be like, wow. Once you check in with me. So, all your cartoon porn addictions. Cartoons they are still a a around? I asked as Alastair gave me a strange look and just nuzzled my cheek. Vegan rants, psychic predictions. Ancient Roman crucifixions. End right here. All your monsters, thieves, and crazies. Cannibals and crying babies. Frothing mouths full of rabies. Fill with cheer. You'll be complete. It'll be so neat. Our service can't be beaten. You'll be on easy street. Yes. Life will be sweet at the happy hotel. Yeah. Charlie pants slightly as her song came to an end. There was only silence. Wow. That was shit. Someone said on screen and everyone laughs uncontrollably. Boo. I, I kinda like it. What in the nine circles makes you think a single denizen of hell would give two shits about becoming a better person? Katie said you have no proof that this little experiment even works. You want people to be good just... because? Katie and the audience laughs, I shook my head at it. Well, we have a patron already who believes in our cause, and he's shown incredible progress. Charlie suddenly said catching our attention easily. Oh? And who might that be? Katie asked. Oh, just someone named... Angel Dust. Charlie said looking at her nails. I saw that SP spidery earlier today actually. I said half-heartedly. He didn't do anything, did he? Alastair asked, his grip on me tightening slightly. Eh no. Nothing like th that. I merely just saw him I re-measured him and he sighed out visually relaxing. The porn star? Tom asked when a zipper noise was heard. You fucking would, Tom, Katie said scratching her nails on the desk as she said so. In any case, that's not even an accomplishment, Katie said. I'm sure you can get that hooker to do anything with enough booja sugar and lube, Katie said as s squelching and wolf whistle sounded out. Oh, I beg to differ. He's been behaved, clean, and out of trouble for two weeks now, Charlie said. Breaking news. We are receiving word that a new player has entered the ongoing turf war. Let's go to the live feed, Katie said and then we heard laughter from the TV. Oh shit, Charlie muttered. Oh, shit indeed. It looks like the one who just joined the battle is none other than Katie started. Katie mockingly let out a gasp porn actor Angel Dust. What a juicy coincidence. You must feel really stupid right now. Katie and Tom laughed together and both said excitedly ratings. Charlie gasped don't look at this. Well, it sure looks like your little project is dead on arrival. Tell us, how does it feel to be such a total failure? Katie asked, said. Katie and the audience laughed. Yeah? Well how does it feel that I got your pen, huh? Bitch? Charlie yelled. There was an ominous thud, Charlie nervously laughs oops. There was a whistle as Tom runs away. After watching the last of the fist fight with Charlie and Katie Killjoy, 
and Alastair with arms linked walked away tail swinging at the same time and walking shoulder to shoulder while quietly cracking jokes and talking with the same hint of adoration as usual. Heading to the hotel? I asked and Alastair merely hummed. Not quite yet. First, we have a date to go to. Alastair said, I blushed and the same squeaky toy noise was heard from me. We walked down the street arm in arm heading towards somewhere. And W where is that? I asked. Wait and see, my dear. Alastair said. Chapter 6 Me and Alastair stood outside of the happy hotel hand in hand as I stood closer to him as he raised his hand to knock on the door Are you all right, my dear? I am fine, Jay just tense, I said as he pressed a loving back to my forehead. Oh. I know. How about you go ahead and knock for me, my love? Alastair said excitedly. I chuckled and nodded knocking on the door three times before stepping back beside Alastair. The door opened. Hell the door slams cutting Alastair off. The door opened again. Oh. And once again the door slammed shut. I huffed and nuzzled my head against Alastair's shoulder. Th that was quite rude, I said, Alastair hummed lightly. Somewhat. Yes it is but in others point of view it is not. It I is in mine. Now remember the plan love, don't want you forgetting halfway though now do we? Alastair said with a chuckle and I nodded quickly. I remember. Now don't forget that if you feel uncomfortable at all and just need to get a breather just do so Alastair reminded me and I pecked his cheek nodding once again. The door opened at last. May I speak now? Alastair asked as he adjusted our arm a link. You may Charlie said trying oh so hard to appear professional. Alastair, a pleasure to be meeting you, sweetheart, quite a pleasure. Alastair introduced himself to her. And this absolutely stunning fellow is Ally, my partner and beyond spectacular associate. Alastair introduced me making me blush under their gazes and wave shyly at them with my free hand. Excuse our sudden visit, but W we saw your fiasco on a picture show and we just couldn't resist. I stuttered out the best I could as Alastair unlinked our arms and grinned wider. What a performance. Why I haven't been that entertained since the stock market crash of 1929. Alastair exclaimed and he laughs as I give out a small chuckle. So many orphans I muttered somewhat delighted. Stop right there. Vaggy shouted pointing her spear right at Alastair who had been quick enough and was standing in front of me protecting me from the tempered moth demon. This Vaggy is so much more aggressive than mine was, she swears in Spanish under breath. I know your game. And I'm not gonna let you hurt anyone here, you pompous, cheesy talk show shitlords. She yelled at us. Dear, if I wanted to hurt anyone here. Alastair started while laughing slightly while pushing the spear down slowly. He tilted his head creepily I would have done so already he let off loud demonic static. No, we are simply here because we want to help. Say what now? Charlie asked. Help. Alastair laughs hello. Is this thing on? Testing, testing. Well, I heard you loud and clear. The microphone answered back making me giggle under my breath slightly. Um, you want to help? Charlie asked confused. We, sweetheart. We. Alastair corrected as he pulled me away from Angel and into a behind hug. With Charlie started but Alastair cut her off this ridiculous thing you're trying to do. This hotel. We want to help you run it. Ah. Uh, why? Charlie asked skeptically. Alastair let me go and laughed as I stood there watching. W why does anyone do anything? I asked setting up Alastair's next line for him. Sheer, absolute boredom. We've both lacked inspiration for decades. Our work became mundane, lacking focus, aimless exclamation mark we've come to crave a new form of entertainment. Alastair said cheerfully as he brings me once again away from Angel's grasp and into my partner's own. 
Does getting into a fist fight with a reporter count as entertainment? Charlie asked. Alastair laughs, I silently do so as well. I it's the purest kind, my dear, I said. Reality. True passion. Alastair added. After all, the world is a stage. I started smiling a medium-sized grin. And the stage is a world of entertainment. Alastair finished grinning a wide-sized smile. So, does this mean that you two think it's possible to rehabilitate a demon? Charlie asked hopefully. Laughter. Of course not. That's wacky nonsense. Redemption, oh the non-existent humanity. No 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 no, I don't think there's anything left that could save such loathsome sinners. The chance given was the life they lived before, the punishment is this. Alastair said with an arm around my waist holding me up against his left side. Th there is no undoing what is done. I said adding on to what my buck had said. So then, why do you guys want to help me if you don't believe in my cause? Charlie asked with a brow raised. Consider it an investment in ongoing entertainment for ourselves. We want to watch the scum of the world struggle to climb up the hill of betterment. Only to repeatedly trip and tumble down to the fiery pit of failure. Alastair said while I nodded in agreement. Right, Charlie said pulling a certain unamused face. Yes indeedy. Alastair replied. I see big things coming your way, and who better to help than we? His voice fades off as I walked on over to the couch where the moth and spider demon resided and stood on the farther end from them, listening in and just trying to entertain myself while Alastair talked with Charlie about stuff. Ah, so uh, what's the deal with smiles over there? And frowny over here? Angel asked, casting Alastair a look then looking at me before giving me a small wink which I just rolled my eyes at. Wait. You've never heard of them before? You've been here longer than me. Vaggy asked shuffling farther away from me. Angel shrugged making an eyed come. They're the radio demons, two of the most powerful beings hell has ever seen? Vaggy said trying to light something in Angel's reign one. A, not big on politics, Angel replied. Vaggy annoyingly groaned decades ago, Alastair and Ally manifested in hell seemingly overnight. They began to topple overlords who had been dominant for centuries. That kind of raw power had never been harnessed by mortal souls before. Then, Alastair with the help of his accomplice would broadcast air carnage all throughout hell, just so everyone could witness their ability. Sinners started calling them the radio demon apostrophe s. As lazy as that is. Many have speculated what unimaginable force enabled them to rival our world's most ancient and destructive evils. But one thing's for sure they're an unpredictable source of danger, a wicked spirit of mystery, and a violent monster of chaos, the likes of which we can't risk getting involved with unless we want to end up erased, Vaggy said. Her bot in her hair turns into lil horns on her head for a split second. Ya done? Angel asked before motioning over to Alastair and silently laughs he looks like a strawberry pimp. He then motions over to me and he looks like a blueberry pimp. Well, I don't trust them, Vaggy said. To be fair, do you trust any man? Any men? Angel gave a light laugh men. Vaggy quickly went over to Charlie Charlie. Listen to me. You can't believe those creeps. Alastair isn't just a happy face. They aren't who they seem to be. I had passed by and made my way over to my partner before giving him a side hug which he just hummed happily and started to pet my ears making me lean into his touch and blush brightly. He continued to pet and scratch at my ear making me blush more and bite my lip as I just adored the feeling. He placed a kiss on my forehead and I wrapped my arms around him not knowing that the two females were watching, Vaggy was disgusted while Charlie was awning. They're both dealmakers, pure evil. They can't be redeemed. And is most likely looking for a way to destroy everything we're trying to do, Vaggy said. I we don't know that look. I know they're bad and I know they probably don't wanna change, but the whole point of this is to give people a chance. 
To have faith things will be better. How can I turn someone away? More or less to somebody? I can't. It goes against everything I'm trying to do. Everything I believe in. Just trust me. I can take care of myself. Charlie said like she was giving Vaggie a little speech which was so cute in a weird way. Charlie, whatever you do, do not make a deal with him either of them. Vaggie yelled out. Don't worry, I picked up one thing from my dad. Charlie said before she started imitating Lucifer yeah don't take shit from other demons. Charlie made her way over to us okay, so. Al, ally. You're both sketchy as fuck, and you two clearly see what I'm trying to do here is a joke. But I don't. I think everyone deserves a chance to prove they can be better. So, I'm taking your offer to help. On the condition that there be no tricks or voodoo strings attached. So it's a deal then? Alastair asked as he held out his hand for her to take, energy was humming. Nope. She pushed Alastair's hand down no shaking. No deals. I... Charlie tried to find her words, I dusted off some dust on Alastair's hair and bit back a giggle when he cast me a glance with a very light tint to his cheeks. As princess of hell, and heir to the throne, I ah. Uh, Hereby order that you both help with this hotel, for as long as you desire. Dot 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 sound fair? She asked. <laughs> fair enough, Alastair said as I nodded and gave her a thumbs up. Cool beans, Charlie said sighing out in relief. Alastair hums as he walks around with me following until Angel caught my eye and winked at me seductively which Alastair somehow caught eye on and glared at the spider obviously not liking Angel. Alastair had made his way to Vaggie smile, my dear. You know you're never fully dressed without one. He scratched under her chin, and she growled barring her fangs. Well gra. Why the fuck does that bastard get away with frowning constantly then huh? Vaggie yelled motioning to me. I felt all of my confidence drain away and I couldn't help but frown more before hugging my arms to my chest and look away. Alastair saw my reaction and his eye twitched as he gripped Vaggie's chin again and growled at her lowly as his horns grew and his smile rose up so much that it should have hurt. Leave my mate out of this you hideous bug, he can do as he pleases without worry. Vaggie was frozen in her spot as Alastair seemed to love her reaction and nodded before coming over to me and pressed a kiss to his lips against mine lovingly which I returned and when we parted he placed a hand onto my cheek rubbing away the tears that had fallen. Are you alright, my love? He asked barely above a whisper, I nodded hastily and nuzzled into his hand's grasp. We parted and he walked around with me glued to his side already regretting coming to the hotel in the first place. Alastair hums so where is your hotel staff? Ah, uh, well. Charlie started and we both looked over at Vaggie. Oh ho ho ho, you're going to need more than that, Alastair said as he made his way over to Angel with me nearby of course. And what can you do, my effeminate fellow? My partner asked I peered over Alastair's shoulder and Angel smirked at me. I can suck your dick. Angel said, I'm guessing his words were directed at Alastair. There was a radio screech. Ha. Huh. No. Alastair replied and I looked around the room catching Charlie's eye I waved and she gave me a small nervous smile. Angel let out a slight laugh your loss. Well, this just won't do. I suppose I can cash in a few favors to liven things up. Alastair said giving me a wink, I heard whooshes, fire crackling, and the small fireplace came to life. Then a toy squeak. Wait dot 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 nifty. This little darling is nifty. Alastair introduced her and dropped her lightly onto the ground. Hi. I'm nifty. It's nice to meet you. She said as she waved and saw me before giving me a strange look and a shrug before looking at every else it's been a while since I've made new friends. She let out a slight excited laugh. Why are you all women? Have any men here? She scattered around I'm sorry, that's rude. Oh man, this place is filthy. She started cleaning about it really needs a lady's touch, which is weird because you're all ladies, no offense. 
I shook my head as I went to Alastair's side and he whispered to me. Much like yours? Alastair asked, he must be referring to my nifty. Not at all, I whisper back to him and he chuckled. Oh my gosh, this is awful. No, no, no she giggles slightly no, no. Nifty gasped nope. Alastair chuckled as I continued to watch Nifty with a slight interest not watching as he summoned someone else. Ha! Read em and weep, boys! A husky voice said. Full woe! The deep voice said again and I looked over to see Husk but more of a grumpy version of him, geez dot 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 things sure are different, there were high-pitched demonic noises. The hell? Husk asked as he looked around. He glanced over from me to Alastair to back to me again and so forth. What the fuck is this? He said looking at us both before he finally let his eyes pinpoint on Alastair. You! Husk growled. Alastair laughed, ah, Husk and my good friend. Glad you could make it. I stood behind Alastair like a lost puppy. Don't you Husk me, you son of a bitch. I was about to win the whole damp pot. Husk I shouted. Good to see you too. Alastair said still smiling widely. Husk faced and what the hell do you want with me this time? Alastair looked at me to make sure that I was still okay and I nodded before he looked back at the grumpy demon my friend, I and my partner are doing some charity work, so I took it upon myself to volunteer your services. He said enthusiastically I hope that's okay. Are you shitting me? Husk yelled, asked. No, I don't think so. Alastair replied. And who the fuck is that? Your fucking twin or some shit? I ain't dealing with two of ya. He yelled, I lowered my ears and stepped back. You thought it would be some kind of big fucking riot just to pull me out to nowhere? Husk asked still angered. You think I'm some kind of fucking clown? Husk asked pissed off. Maybe, Alastair replied smugly. I chuckled. I ain't doing no fucking charity job, Husk said. Well, I figured you would be the perfect face to man the front desk of this fine establishment, Alastair said, motioning to the bar. With your charming smile and welcoming energy, this job was made for you. Don't worry, my friend. Alastair made his way over to the bar I can make this more welcoming. I plopped myself up onto the counter with my legs crossed over each other, a bottle of cheap booze sat on my lap appearing just like magic if you wish. Alastair chuckled and I winked playing along. What, you think you can buy me with a wink and some cheap booze? Husk yelled with a light blush and stomped on over to the bar where we were and he got behind the bar. Well, you can. He shouted and snatched the bottle from me, I continued to sit there though sort of comfy. Hey hey, hey hey hey. No, no bar, no alcohol. This is supposed to be a place that discourages sin. Not some kind of mouth brothel, man cave vaggy started and was cut off. A smack and car horn noise was heard as Angel pounced onto Vaggy shutting her up shut up. Shut. Up. We are keeping these. Angel slaughtered up to us and purred. Hey dot tilde Angel purred at us as Husk shuffled away from Angel and closer to me. Go fuck yourself. Husk said annoyed. Only if you two watch me, Angel said seductively. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the happy hotel. Charlie yelled as she said very excitedly you're going to love it here. Charlie said as she directed her attention to Husk. I lost the ability to love years ago. He continued gulping. So, what do you think? Alastair asked. This is amazing. Charlie said as she let off a noisemaker sound. It's, okay. Vaggy replied. This is going to be very entertaining. Alastair said excitedly. Alastair shoved Vaggy away and winked at me. Here it comes. Well, I do hope you enjoyed the videos so far and video game content. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and leave a comment down below. And I noticed 
40% of you guys are not subscribed to the channel. If you can, please subscribe to the channel. It will help me and help the channel grow. Until next time, goodbye.